Well, hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. I'm Michelle Holden, a mixed media artist behind this channel. And this week um, is called Exploring Color Number Two, uh, New Collage Papers. Um, I had to think about this one, uh, if it was uh, worthy enough for a video, but um, I think it is because um, I'm taking this uh, color palette that um, was in last week's video and I'm just taking it one step further uh, as I discussed in last week's video. So if you didn't see it, um, you can check it out. And um, it's just the one previous. And I wanted to uh, explore these color colors further and just see what else I could do with them, um, with the uh, with corresponding collage papers, um, with contrast, different values, um, lights and darks going on. So as you can see, I just selected, and I knew what kinds of papers might really ben uh, be work really well with these colors. And it's the newsprint, old sketches with the graphite. You saw the uh, grid paper, the centimeter grid paper, and just plain uh, copy paper. So uh, this gel pr jelly plate is, I believe it's a five by seven. Um, I will definitely um, find that out and leave the exact size. Um, I just got it at uh, the Curry's art store and you can get them, you know, anywhere mostly on Amazon I believe and notice this paper here it's um, it's all faded and it's stained and it has that nice and antique -y look to it and I wanted to show how I make because uh, everybody makes their papers differently I don't like to over mix on the collage papers but then for this next pass I do and I really like that darker blue shadow that it leaves. Um, in previous um, mixes, I've um, really made them uh, roll the brayer so it's perfectly mixed, which is really nice, depending on, I guess, the artwork that you're making. So on the left is newsprint paper again with... Um, just some black marks um, I'm always using or trying to use. I have a palette behind me that I just had a little bit of leftover paint and it was the same and I didn't use it, um, but um, it's always good to do that. You might even wanna set aside, depending on how, how big your area is that you're working on, uh, notice that shadow. So these are the kinds of things that artists and, and are talking about. Um, you only know from experience what that black underneath another layer is going to look at through experimenting with layers. And making collage papers is the best way. So you don't, you, you, just, you just keep playing around, you use marks, uh, you can also see what uh, color mixing can, can create. Um, making lighter values, darker values, and of course, making little notes in this special sketchbook, this special journal, I should say, that I'm saving. And I'm just trying to push, stick with it to, to see what a color palette, what I can make. Um, not all colors will go on one journal page. And um, that's what you're going to see next week. Um, I was going to put it all together in one video, but uh, it turned out to be uh, too long. So I'm splitting uh, what I thought was going to be one video into two collage papers and then what I'm going to create with them afterwards. So slowly it's evolving on its own. Um, I'm wanting, as I've said previously, to explore new color palettes, see what I can do. I do love the blue-orange realm of colors, spectrum of colors, I should say. And uh, But just to stick with them longer, um, 
and really learn from them rather than moving on to something else. Um, I didn't like the thought of my colors, uh, my paintings having way too much color in them. I wanted, uh, I'm looking for uniformity, subtlety, and as I get more clear, uh, that's what we're going for. Wow, I love that blue. That is so nice. And of course, these colors are the exact same colors as last week. That is cadmium red deep, turquoise, titanium, um, whatever the neutral was there, I forget, black and white, and Hansa yellow. There it is there, the golden. I've been desperately trying to switch over to the yellow oxide or an ochre, but uh, I'm going to do that in the next palette. So I'm going to change my red to a magenta. Uh, I might even change the blue from the turquoise, but I just want to see. I'm experimenting with this turquoise color. I might switch to teal. We'll see. So cleaning up your tools in between. Um, I keep a really hard piece of plastic on top of my jelly plate to keep it moist. And I noticed when I took the dent or whatever mark there is on the plastic and smoothed it out, um, the mark on my jelly plate uh, disappeared too. So it, uh, it's very adaptable to whatever you put on top of it. And I'm always afraid of... Um, whenever you're using tools, running over them, running over it that, you know, I don't want to scratch it. So what here, what I'm going for here is that nice orange again. And um, I will show the pictures of the palette at the end. Uh, and we and you can, we can compare them. And now here comes that beautiful, it's, it's such an intense orange, but it's not overly bright. Um, I think, it, yeah, it works really well with that, with that, um, turquoise. And just any leftover papers, I'm trying to save all my copy, my printing that doesn't work, and just use that. Because if there's any words or text or numbers underneath, it'll look really cool. So, wow, so nice, all that subtlety. And you'll notice, too, Sometimes I really put a lot of paint on the jelly plate and I really like the thickness that it makes on the collage, on the collage paper. So going for some more orange, I probably, yes, I'm going to add the titanium and just a touch of red and let's see what happens here. So um, I have the uh, palette page that you saw in last week's video next to me. And I'm just using that as my guide. I, sh I should have had it right beside me, but that's okay. Um, just to make sure I'm making all the colors that I want for this uh, little mini series. We'll call it a mini series. Uh, one color palette at a time, <laughs> as we can learn. And I know now, now that I'm exploring these color palettes, now I'm really wanting to explore shape. So uh, that'll be the next series after this. Wow, I love that one. Love it, love it. And of course, I, um, some, oh good, undo, I'm making the ghost print. I'm making the second one. Let's see what this, ha what happens here. Those are just uh, old printouts again. Oh, there we go. And it really cleans it up nicely. Wow. So nice. I still haven't um, really, really explored all the different ways. I know that there's jelly plate printers out there, mono prints, and there's so many things. And of course, with stenciling, uh, for this time, um, as you can see, so st stick to the end. I take some of the plain ones or the ones that I, you know, haven't used a texture or a pattern on them and I apply a different pattern on top of them uh, and keep some plain so I have a variety. I love that. 
So this is a very deep orange and it's pretty powerful. That's a piece of cardstock and just left over. And underneath my jelly print is that uh, plastic. Um, I used to use the white paper, but I was getting it messed up and uh, in order for a nice clean white background for the videos. And um, I didn't like that I couldn't wipe it. So it just got dirtier and dirtier. So I, I uh, this is that like, I don't know what it's called. It's a plastic and it had it has the ribbing in it, so it's pretty stiff. Lionel board or it's not board, it's just plastic, but they make signs out of. And uh, I think I want to get a, even a larger sheet and and switch them out so the background stays nice and clean. Um, this is the dark, almost like a chocolatey brown that was on the palette that I'm going for. This is a little more black than, than what I intended, but hey, I'm wanting a variety of blacks that are not black, that still go with this color palette. Oh, you can see that streak. Oh, and I love the little mistakes in it. So behind me, where my table is, um, I have several stations in my studio uh, right now where I am is my office recording spot. I've got my journal spot. And these are just fold those folding tables and a great big wide one in front where I can hang up my paintings. And uh, when I switch to working with my larger work, I will use that area. It's just getting the really good lighting for the video. That's the thing. There it is. There's what I'm trying to go for. And I can see if you didn't notice, where I'm lying my brayer down each time, I'm getting a record of that particular color that I use. And there, uh, I think I take a picture of it because it's just too cool. Oh, wow, look at that reddish brown. It's beautiful. Let's see if I do another one. And just doing another one, doesn't matter if it works or not, it just cleans up your jelly print uh, printer uh, that much better so you have less to wipe. Yep. That might be interesting too, especially if I roll a lighter color or a, a thin transparent layer on that. And instead of wiping, I just keep adding and switching slowly to another uh, value, lighter, darker, Love the neutrals. I so want to make a series of neutral paintings. Um, I don't know if I'll start with the raw umber, but I like the idea of starting with a mid-tone of an ochre, even black underneath, going from dark to light, and getting that rich under layer. So this week, um, if you haven't subscribed or joined my mailing list, I finally have put carved out some time for a new uh, for a new blog. I'm going to be uh, forcing myself to write. I'm just going to write a blog once per month. So that then at least each year I'll have twelve blogs, and uh, this one um, just further explains the different stages of abstract, um, when you're creating an abstract, that um, is, I'm slowly enlightening to, and uh, really, really had a, um, a good epiphany, or uh, things really came together in that last um, abstract uh, on the 12 by 12 um, wooden panel. So uh, that'll be coming out uh, this Sunday along with, uh, in an email. Uh, it'll be separate from the video though. I won't put them together in the same email. It'll be a separate uh, mailing. So if you haven't joined my subscription, my subscribers list, uh, please do. And um, as I create some more products, get courses going, um, 
and more blogs and information. It's just, um, it just takes that, uh, the video and information that much further. And uh, I find if I have clear clarification, um, maybe you will too, especially if you're following the journey at all. And um, as I discussed before, I don't usually use green, but I'm really liking this. So I didn't quite like this. I'm trying to go for sort of a sage or that closer to a blue green, which is the most green I can handle at this point. But I'm really liking this. I can see this color um, as a lighter value uh, look really, really cool. Oh, good. So I do decide to add a little white instead of the Titan buff. And it does, it's not bad. I would have liked a little more blue, but hey, this is just a collage paper, so. But it's made from the same colors, so they'll all relate. So I put my uh, brayer down again, and now there's a green line that's going to be there. It's pretty cool. I'll take a picture of that and throw that in. Very nice. And I think that I don't, that was copy paper. I really need to get some more newsprint paper. Love that stuff. And let me know uh, what different papers um, you use and what you've tried. Um, I also love the idea of uh, using coffee or tea to stain the newsprint paper to um, make it more antique, give it that vintage look. That's really cool. <clears throat> and just leave, the, leave that information in the comments because um, it's really good when we can share or when you're uh, over in the Facebook group, you can uh, share what kinds of papers you've used and what has worked for you love to hear it. I read all my comments, love the ones lately, and uh, welcome anyone. Uh, there's, there's a few new subscribers. I'm always getting new ones every day, which is really awesome, and I must thank everyone for helping my channel grow, and um, we will grow and evolve. It's a slow process. It doesn't happen overnight. As one of my uh, mentor artists has said again in her email, I so agree with her. <clears throat> and uh, we must enjoy the process in order to keep going. So this was very unexpected. So of course, all the stuff underneath came up with it, and what an interesting texture. So I think I probably cleaned the plate up at this time. Oh, no, I'm going for it again. <laughs> All right. Oh, yes. So this is where I run out of the uh, large pieces of newsprint paper, and I've got these little halves. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just lie one on one side and one on the other, and go from there. So this is how I clean off and it does a pretty good job. And I think I was looking at the palette again and really needed some neutral, lighter value. Wow, love that. So after I finish, finished making these, um, of course I let them dry thoroughly overnight and the next day, um, I um, uh, was just looking around at some marks. And of course, I go to Pinterest. Um, if any of you have been on uh, All My Art and Soul, follow me on Pinterest. I have banks and banks of images, um, shapes, patterns, um, color abstract, mixed media abstract, mixed media collage, um, the art process. Uh, those are the, um, the, uh, the pins that I share and just keep adding to them. So if you haven't checked out um, All My Art and Soul, uh, the link is below. 
this video in the comments and make sure to check it out and just to get some ideas. I just, uh, I'm trying not to, or I'm finding I don't need to do that as much as in the, in my, in the early stages because I'm getting some clarification, there we go, as to where I'm going. What is my art about? Uh, but if I want to get some new shapes and uh, new marks that I want to try, that's the best place to go. And then I just save them in my categories. And um, um, there's another idea. Um, how useful is Pinterest to you as an artist? Um, as a resource, and of course, not trying to keep your own voice going uh, but we know in the early days, we sort of like to emulate uh, our favorite artists or maybe the things that they're doing. But as long as we're putting it, our own voice to it, it can be really helpful. <clears throat> oh, I love that. And I love the blue that's still on there, but it's underneath. It's all scratchy. It's very vintage looking. Love this. Got to make some more of these. All right. Let's see what we have left. So cleaning off the brayer. Let's see if I'm going to put on, okay, whoops. And I have to make sure too, when I'm doing using the tube that way that I'm not marking the jelly, jelly plate. Um, I didn't see any marks on it, so I think we're, we're safe, we're good to go. I would also love to hear uh, from any of, of you wonderful subscribers, what has been the best uh, video series on my channel that you've liked? Uh, there's the early days of the time lapse, positive affirmations. Like I said, I am going back there just because I need to do it for my own uh, benefit um, of earth and sky, um, abstract series and then of course branching off into more specialized areas like I am with this series and um, really for for a purpose of taking this stuff to some larger work and, apl and applying it and uh, mostly now painting over old work that um, doesn't doesn't fit anymore. I've evolved since. So um, changing those, maybe keeping some colors on it, but painting right over that canvas again, putting the gesso on and just changing it up. Because why have things sit around? That stuff costs money and uh, that's what I've been doing. Uh, they've just been sitting here staring at me in my in my studio and uh, we are going to get that started very soon as March break approaches. Okay, loving these little strips of color and texture. Wow, love that one. And so as I continue to use these uh, smaller newsprint uh, papers, um, it has a really lovely neutral feel to them, especially with the turquoise. And... So now, um, so that stage, it's stage phase one of the jelly print, print, jelly plate printer. And now I'm going to add um, my texture, my marks to my pages. And of course, I just had to start with this beautiful peachy, neutral, I don't know what you call it, but I made a bunch of them as you just saw. And I'm going to add the contrasting blue, but in a very uh, equivalent value, uh, raw umber, uh, tur turquoise, and of course the Titan buff, and then combinations of those. So I'm just moving my, my whole uh, thing over so you can see me mix the paint at the same time. Um, and I don't want it too contrasty, so I'm thinking if I do, um, I'm thinking that Titan buff on both the neutral right there in front of us and the blue will be enough. And of course it's Liquitex Basics, nice heavy body paint, 
and all I do is use my, so here's some tools that I never ended up using. So um, I'm gonna make a new batch that you're going to see. Um, you don't need to watch me do it, but they'll be in next week's collection. And um, um, I will be creating at least three different um, abstract journal pages. Um, and I might do it on cardstock. I might do it you know, right on the page in the scrapbook um, because I'm, I want to keep this as a, um, um, an exploratory kind of series. So I don't want to have to, you know, put, because you won't, we'll only put pressure on ourselves uh, at the end to have this abstract journal page, which that's what it's for too. But I might just, uh, I want to use just horizontal, um, not stripes, but areas. And I just want to experiment in the different sizes using, uh, um, dividing it up into three, five, seven, and using slightly vertical. I'm really feeling horizontal shapes, rectangles and circles and marks and lines. So that's, that's my plan. Who knows what'll happen though? We know that you know, anything can happen. So this is the raw umber. And I realized that, wow, I using that will look so cool as a collage paper. And um, I don't know if you have your work up in, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have a studio, I am very blessed to have my studio. And I took down all my older work that just doesn't, isn't me anymore because we're evolving and changing. That's the whole point of this thing. And I look at, up at sections that, um, these are pieces that I haven't yet put. Um, I don't know if I want to put them on my website or whatever, uh, but there's different sections of them that I really, really love and that would make um, a fabulous series in itself in the feeling that I'm looking for. So I can't wait to get those started. And these collage papers are definitely one step closer to what I'm going for. So this isn't bad, but I don't know. I think it's a little too contrasty. So let's see if I add a little blue and try something different. So closer to its value, of course, in those little dots, or you know, it's a filbert brush, so I love the shapes that they make. So I'm just, just playing and just getting some collage papers. And of course, I also want to use paint along with my collage papers. So I don't want it to be completely collage or completely paint. I just love the both together. So that's fabulous. That one turned out pretty cool. And of course, I cut and both tear my papers because getting that soft edge and here is this peachy one. So I'm thinking of more blue, but I definitely want to lighten up the value just to lessen the contrast. And of course, there's that word differences. So I'm wanting some differences. So I'm thinking stripes, dabs, circles, different shapes, different colors, different values. And right away, it's too contrasty. Even now it's like, oh, but keep watching because I do change the value. I think I put the Titan buff right over top of the blue and it's much better. I'm just going, no, don't like it. It's just too much better. So taking desaturizing it is much better. Way too much saturation up there and oh, it just feels better to me. Some of you might like uh, really uh, a lot of contrast between your colors. Uh, that's what we call dynamic. It's a very dynamic approach and it creates way more energy. So if part of my painting does need that, um, I, you know, that's what we need to keep in mind. And then just making long ones, large ones. And I had this intention in mind with these particular shapes or marks, I should say, so that was the attention for the second stage of this collage paper process. And I'm really enjoying this. 
Why? Because it's, it's making me think more of my colors, of even what, okay, so now how will I use these? And I love that process. So, so stay tuned for next week's video that's coming up. So I love the way that one is. I didn't want to touch it. And of, of course, I want some without any marks on it. I want to mix. Oh, so I love the blue and I didn't want to change it up. So I just added random dots to this piece. And of course, I would use it uh, as a very large piece, larger piece of collage. And if I do like this one, I definitely am going to make some more because it's one of my favorite colors, turquoise. And as you can see, I've set up, I've had, I have all the collage papers above me, uh, some beside me, and my paints to the right, and everything is within reach. And um, so putting, ooh, right from the tube, I use the turquoise here. Very interesting. And then I only do it to half. So in the future, if I notice I really like that one, of course I'm going to make, you know, cover the whole thing or make two sheets or a batch of them. So here comes the neutrals. Um, and I love how they're all so different, the three of them. And I'm going to use dar uh, dark and light. Use a Titan buff with a little bit of blue, but I don't want to use those dabs. And I'm just using those lines, the swirly lines. So using curvilinear, curvilinear um, sort of random, natural, organic feel. And then if I want a certain line or whatever, I can just tear a section or use the whole section on my work. So knowing that a little bit of blue is working, nice. But I just want a little bit, okay. And it probably would have looked, worked well as well with the wider brush. So thinking about that now, so I'll keep that in mind. And let's see what I do with this one. I think I make the same kind of mark using a little bit of the raw umber. Oh, nice. I know why, because it was too light. And sometimes um, what I'm thinking here is if on the page I'm using paint and painting similar lines, and then I'm gonna go in with a piece of collage Again, with similar lines, it's almost like it's um, you're adding sort of a fractured feel to it. Or if you have uh, specific shapes and you cut them up and you put them in, position them differently on your work, it creates a different feeling too. Um, using abstract or uh, realistic images that are chopped up, say, tree branches, using different direction, using directionality, this kind of thing, um, can create just uh, for the viewer, the viewer can see it, recognizes it, but it's, it's in a different uh, state. That's sort of what I'm, uh, sort of what I'm going for if, if, if that uh, was clear. So the orange was driving me crazy, it was beautiful, I probably should have left it, but I just needed some lighter marks on it and uh, make it become a, a, a layer. And as you can see, I still have lots of orange up there to use. A little more towards the red. And this one with the shadow underneath, I must make more. And knowing that I like the effect and uh, maybe using raw umber instead of black. So what kind of shapes, interesting shapes would look good and then have a layer um, either with a brayer or with the jelly plate printer. And already um, it's like shadows within shadows within shadows on your canvas. So you're getting this, frac these, this fractured reality kind of look. Uh, it's not a look, I guess it would be a feel. So look, see the difference between the white and the Titan buff? 
totally different. So I'm just grabbing some more from the pile there. Uh, the green, but more of a black green. So right away I'm thinking, oh, some nice dark lines would look really good. And then of course, just randomly. So using this same shape uh, with the brush, but now it's light, it's dark, it's on different colors. So that's sort of the, the thread of uni uniformity that could be, that might work, I'm not sure. That's just what I was thinking when I was uh, uh, choosing this mark. Uh, horizontal, vertical. And, uh, ah. so I didn't want to overcrowd it. And I noticed too, when you use the thick paint, and you make marks like that and the paint stays nice and thick on the paper, it's really a nice texture. Even if you end up covering it again once it's on your painting or your page. And really liking the blue with the green, um, adding some just horizontal lines, something different. It's not different, but it's different from the marks that I've been making previously. And I think this is the last one so here is the collection. Um, I really like how they all blend together. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Can't wait to get started with the new collage papers. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.